Good morning, everybody. This is a live severe weather briefing on the threat that's going to materialize this late afternoon and evening across western Tennessee, possibly into far northern Alabama, northern Mississippi. And it looks like the threat is going to materialize first at around 2 to 3 p.m. Uh, there's going to be a retreating warm front that is lifting off to the north. That warm front is going to be the focus for some enhanced low-level shear to the south of that warm front. There's going to be quite a bit of unstable air to the north of that warm front. There's stable air and right along and just to the south of that warm front is where hodographs are going to be quite elongated for a tornado threat. And I do expect storms to first initiate across southwestern Tennessee just ahead of a surface low, a subtle surface low that's going to ride from west to east across that warm front. The warm front should lift to pretty close to the Mississippi-Tennessee border, maybe a little bit north up to that I-40 corridor. And those storms are going to move from west to east along this warm frontal zone into central Tennessee, possibly building just to the south into northeastern Mississippi, northern Alabama. And there also is this cold air wedge. This is a textbook cold air damming event in the southern Appalachians and storms early in the afternoon that interact with that boundary could also have the potential to produce tornadoes but those storm motions are going to be more perpendicular to that boundary the supercell should have a tendency to cross into that very stable air and then weaken <clears throat> into this dammed up stable air across the southern appalachians but i'm really watching the west to east oriented warm front that's going to be lifting northward through mississippi into western tennessee uh, including western uh, uh, central Tennessee as that warm front lifts off to the north. I do expect a little bit of a subtle surface slope to develop along that warm front. Storms initiating in western Tennessee first and then moving from west to east along uh, that boundary. And the greatest window for that tornado potential is between about 4 and 9 p.m., but that threat could extend after that into uh, south central Tennessee, into northern Alabama uh, this evening as well. Right now, there are some storms moving through uh, northern Arkansas. This is on the Radar Omega app, and uh, there were some severe thunderstorm warnings earlier this morning across northeastern Oklahoma, but right now we've just got some elevated storms, uh, some strong storms that are sub-severe moving through the Ozarks here of uh, northern Arkansas, uh, but this is well ahead of that uh, surface low that is moving from west to east. Uh, the surface low is in association with the left exit region of a jet streak. So underneath that left exit region, you have a vacuum cleaner aloft. That leads to surface pressure falls in the low levels. And that's why this system is so compact at the low levels. Uh, 850 millibars, you can see a well-defined 850 millibar low. And as well at the surface. This is the best indication here of the position of the warm front by late afternoon. And you can see that the uh, HRRR uh, forecast position of that warm front shows a wavy warm front lifting into far southern Tennessee. And this is the boundary that I'm really going to be watching for that tornado threat. You can see these little waves uh, along that warm front right there. Uh, this little ripple out ahead of it is ahead of that surface low that's going to be moving along that warm front. This field right here is the forecast 0 to 1 kilometer EHI, or the Energy Helicity Index. That's a composite index between low-level wind shear and that uh, instability, or the surface base cape. And you can see a lot of instability to the south of that warm front, lifting right up to that boundary. Right along that boundary, there's also going to be some backed winds or some relative uh, weaker winds. And uh, you've got a, a low-level jet of 40 to 50 knots. Uh, just above this low level jet. So that's going to create very elongated hodographs along this warm front across far southern Tennessee, possibly into northern Mississippi, eventually into far northern Alabama as well. And I'm going to show you some of these hodographs. But this is that warm frontal zone, and those severe storms could extend down into eastern Arkansas as well. But the wind shear profiles there veer out. So you get a lot of westerly momentum air, even in the low levels of the atmosphere, back behind this surface low. So the tornado potential is certainly going to be greatest right along that surface low track and along uh, that, that warm frontal zone. That's what I'm targeting. I'm heading toward the Jackson area to reevaluate. Let's look at the surface map right now and then we can see where the morning position is of that warm front that's lifting off to the north. Those storms that are in northern Arkansas are definitely in the stable air there in the Ozarks. Temperatures in the 40s, even the 50s. Memphis, you're north of the warm front. You've got fog. Uh, temperatures in the low to mid 50s there. And then temperatures rise up into the upper 60s there south of the warm front. So that warm front is lifting through southeastern Arkansas into um, 
northern Mississippi and across into northern Alabama. And then you get that wedge in northern Georgia, cold air damming event. You've got a lot of stable air banked up against uh, the east side of the Appalachians, and that's bleeding into northern Georgia. That could mitigate the severe weather threat over most of northern Georgia, but right along that boundary to the west of Atlanta, there is a chance that some of those supercells could interact with that boundary and get some early tornado warnings. But this is the main target, this warm front that's lifting north through northern Mississippi. Eventually that's going to get into southern Tennessee here, and that's where I'm targeting, right in this zone uh, along southern Tennessee. That's where I think the warm front is going to park. Uh, storms will initiate by early afternoon, likely near the uh, Mississippi River, near the Memphis area, and then those will move off to the east, and eventually the warm front will meet up with it, and then it will become surface base, likely somewhere to the southeast of Memphis, closer to the Mississippi border, depending on how far north that warm front lifts, of course. And looking at a forecast photograph out ahead of these storms in uh, far southern Tennessee, this is southeast of the Jackson area at about 4 to 5 p.m. And you can see a, a strongly curved photograph. You've got your low-level jet up here in excess of 40 knots a kilometer up, well out of the southwest. You've got your weaker surface winds that are quite backed out of the due south at about 10 knots in the vicinity of that warm front. You've got your storm motion here at about 40 knots just north of due east. That's going to be relatively parallel to that warm frontal zone. You've got a lot of strong winds aloft as well. And uh, th those actually veer just a little bit. But basically due westerly flow in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere. That's going to lead to almost a due easterly storm motion. That leads to critical angles that are pretty close to 90 degrees. And all of this area inside the hodograph curve and the storm motion vector is storm relative helicity within that layer, proportional to it. And there is a lot of wind shear. I could even see a potential of a strong tornado or two if some supercells are dominant and are able to re reside in that warm frontal zone for longer. Those storms will certainly have a chance of producing even a strong tornado or two. And here you can see the sounding. Another thing that is uh, a telltale characteristic of these zonal flow jet streak type of events is you get quite a bit of a stout elevated mix layer and you almost have a double barreled elevated mix layer here. Probably looks more like this, just like a little cloud layer it looks like coming in here at the mid-levels. But there's a lot of dry air that's going to be coming in at the mid-levels of the atmosphere. That's the EML or the elevated mix layer. That's going to contribute to uh, instability steeper lapse rates and a lot of cape. This area right here between the theoretical parcel lift and the red which is the environmental temperature that's cape. So that's positive buoyancy right there. If you can imagine a theoretical balloon lifting up along this line of the moist adiabat due to latent heat release it cools at a slightly slower temperature rate than the dry adiabatic lapse rate. But you can see that that balloon is always warmer than the red temperature, the environmental temperature around it, until it reaches the equilibrium temperature up here, which is near the tropopause or the top of the lower atmosphere. But definitely a lot of cape available for these storms. These are going to be intense supercell storms, two points in the mid to upper 60s, temperatures in the low 70s. This wind profile, as is often the case in Dixie Alley, the uh, storm relative helicity has really contributed by the speed shear, but there is some directional shear. You've got a south-southwesterly surface wind that's a little bit weaker near that warm frontal zone. And then uh, here's the low-level jet, west-southwest or southwesterly low-level jet at about 40 knots. And then those relatively veered mid and upper level winds aloft. So this certainly does look like a pretty stout uh, severe weather threat. Now I'm going to break down the HRRR model just to show you the evolution of this. I meant to uh, stream this live, but there are some issues with my live streaming platform, so I just had to record uh, this weather briefing and post it. Uh, but here you can see those storms initiating at around 1 or 2 p.m. right near uh, the Mississippi River. These will likely be elevated supercells initially, and then they're going to move off to the east, merge up with that warm front that's lifting off to the north. Uh, likely near the Mississippi-Tennessee border by 2 or 3 p.m. here. Elevated storms ongoing to the north near the I-40 corridor. And this is just the HRRR solution. But then those supercells on the southern edge 
of those elevated storms become surface based and definitely become supercells here in southwestern Tennessee, likely to the south of Jackson by about 4 p.m. You even got a, a supercell back behind uh, the surface zone near the Jonesboro area, maybe a little south of Jonesboro. But it's this supercell here, just ahead of that subtle surface low or wave right along the warm front. This is the uh, likely going to be the main tornado producer. It's uh, near the I-40 corridor, maybe just south of there, uh, just north of the Mississippi border. You do also get the hint at some renegade beans, some supercells developing down into northeastern Mississippi as well. Those could track into northwestern Alabama, as could these that are eventually going to be tracking in to central Tennessee by about 6 p.m. And these are likely tornado producers, definitely intense supercell stor <coughs> storms far southern Tennessee. Eventually by about 7 p.m., those storms begin to migrate uh, into the Na Nashville area, 7, 8, 9 p.m., and you've got supercell storms that are building off to the south into northwestern Alabama as well. And all of those are in very strongly sheared environments. Storm relative helicity on the order of two to 300. You can see that little pop of the helicity, of that inflow getting fed into that storm, that lead tornado producer there, far south central Tennessee. So I'm targeting this area across southern Tennessee. It definitely looks like a robust tornado threat. Certainly a day to stay tuned to those watches and warnings um, across southern, central southern Tennessee into northern Mississippi, northern Alabama, and northern Georgia along the boundary of that cold air damming event. And eventually that severe weather is going to spread uh, into the southern Appalachians, western Carolinas to late, late night. So stay tuned to those watches and warnings, everybody. This is the target area once again, the area of the greatest tornado threat between about 4 and 9 p.m. Thank you, everybody, for your support of these daily weather briefings and live storm chasing. I'm going to be heading east into western and central Tennessee near the Mississippi border. Stay safe and dominate the storm.